first time I saw Senga's work, Senga was actually installing a piece at a gallery in New York. It was just totally incredible to see her presence as a somewhat older woman of color in the gallery just installing this work that to me looked very contemporary but in certain ways like something I'd never seen before. And as I learned more about her work and I learned about the historical context of her work and how important she was as an artist um, from Los Angeles and New York in the context of the 1970s, um, the more I became convinced that she's just an absolute pioneer. With the work in Mocha's collection, it's really incredible. It's just two materials. It's nylon mesh and sand. And the nylon mesh um, holds different weights of sand, which are then attached to the wall. She did what she could do to best advantage exploiting every possible aspect of it. Basically with no support, professional support from the outside world. I know about this because it's what I live too. And so when you're in a situation like that, you're not running to the art supply store. You're going to use stuff that's at hand. And um, by using something like pantyhose, she's really referencing her body, other women's bodies. And then by extrapolation, everybody's body. You know, everybody has a pendulous, hangy thing. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. The work in Mocha's collection is part of a larger series of RSVP, Responde s'il vous plaît, sculptures um, that Senga developed. Senga comes from a background in dance, and so her awareness of how objects occupy space is very much informed by a sense of the body. We both had the same dance teacher, basically. You know, we were trickle down from the same generation of people. That original weekly dance class meant, eventually it meant everything to me because Sangha rediscovered it and brought it out and somehow our collaboration brought it out and somehow to this day it's, it's like a way that I define if something is challenging. Seng has been in two really crucial exhibitions at MOCA. The first one was the 1998 exhibition Out of Actions Between Performance and the Object, which was a show that really just was an absolute watershed exhibition in terms of how we understand the relationship between sculpture and performance. Senga's work was also included in WAC, Art and the Feminist Revolution in 2007, which was a very important deeply researched exhibition on feminist art. And I think for a lot of younger artists, that was sort of the moment when Senga's work really became visible and became really part of the discussion about um, how artists have responded to the historical legacy of feminist art. On one side there's education, on the other side there's the marketplace. But what keeps you in the game is your community. It's crucial to being an artist. It's more crucial than anything. I don't think that you could write a history of 20th century performance and sculpture without Zynga today.